Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to Stormworks, and today we are working on something a little different. So I apologize, a lot of this is kind of built, and uh, you guys didn't see it. So I recorded, and I had my recording settings messed up. It was recording the wrong, um, what do you call it? aspect ratio, I guess. It was, basically, I was playing in a different aspect ratio than I was recording. Therefore, it kind of cut off part of the screen. And uh, I lost the first two videos of us building this. But anyways, welcome. This is the newest build. This is a nuclear submarine. So uh, again, I'm sorry the uh, the first couple videos got messed up, but we were really just placing blocks. Um, none of this is really functional yet. We haven't done anything. But to get you guys up to speed, this is a nuclear submarine. And it's basically just going to be really, really fast and uh, that's gonna be about it. So um, there's gonna be a, a couple other fun features we squeeze into it, but we're not gonna get into that quite yet. Um, right now I am working on a ballast system. So the tricky thing about submarines is pressure gradients. Once you get really, really low in the water, it becomes exponentially harder to um, blow your ballast because you're pumping basically from one atmosphere inside your ballast to like a lot really like a lot, a lot when you get lower to um, past a couple hundred meters, it, it becomes a very, very hard thing to overcome. So you need a lot of torque in your motors. Um, it's, it's, there's a few ways you can get around it. I like plumbing, you guys know that. So we're gonna get into it with some um, pretty weird different methods. I'm gonna try to make this submarine function as realistically as possible from a plumbing aspect. So we are going to go full HVAC, full fresh air, full oxygen, oxygen production. Um, sorry, I'm having a hard time speaking right now, geez. But, um, um, yeah, full oxygen production. We're going to have a pressurized ballast system so you can emergency blow the ballast without power. Um, all sorts of fun fail safes like that. Radiation barriers. Um, again, fresh air vents. So you guys will see we're going to go crazy with it. But right now the uh, pipes here are basically a, um, those impellers are hooked up to our reactor. So the, the torque coming off of our steam turbines from our reactor and uh, if you guys want, I can kind of do a separate video talking about reactors. I'm not really a subject matter expert, but this one does perform pretty well. This is the first one I really, I guess, tried to do well with. But um, again, I kind of, you guys missed it in the first episode, so it's kind of hard to explain really what it is. If you've built one in the game, you know what we're doing. Essentially, we are taking a nuclear reactor. We're taking nuclear fuel rods, heating them up. The water heats up around it. You cycle the water through a steam turbine. The steam turbine turns the generator. You make power off of the generator, and then you uh, condense that steam, and you, then you shove it back into the reactor. Um, that's kind of like the lowdown of all of that, but basically the steam turbines are going to produce a very, very high level of torque, and uh, we're going to put that into a kinetic energy bank, and then that kinetic energy bank is going to feed these impeller pumps. And so basically you at a flick of a switch you will be able to uh, put an astronomical amount of torque into these pumps and uh, get water pumping out of the ballast no matter what pressure you're at so i haven't really max, uh, tested the max pressure but i got well below 300 meters when i did test this and it was pumping just fine now we have the reactor side of these pumps hooked, hooked up and you see we have the um, the inflow from the ballast tank in. So we have to find a way to evacuate this water out of the submarine and that's what we're gonna work to on now. Um, we're not gonna do really any logic, any microcontrollers for the first couple episodes. We'll get into the logic a little bit later. I can show you the logic for the reactor if you guys want. Um, it's just one simple PID and it controls the, uh, the f control rods. And then basically if it gets too hot, it'll just release the fuel, extract it, turn the reactor off, let it cool down. Um, but enough of that. We're going to get into the time lapse. We're going to get some of this structure in and uh, then we will, uh, I guess we'll talk a little bit more about what we're going to do and then um, what we have done also.
got the rest of that kind of plumbed up we're going to move on to something a little bit more sciencey here now i did a little bit of building off camera you guys can see there's a tank up there with water um, we basically have some desalinators running into that so we need some fresh water which does not make sense scientifically um, salt, salt water would actually work better for what we're doing we're going to use the hydrolyzer and uh, we're going to do use some electric hydrolysis to um, basically separate the oxygen and hydrogen now i'm doing this for two separate reasons the hydrogen is basically going to be double the byproduct of the oxygen, H2O, um, so it's two to one. Now we're gonna pull all of the oxygen out of that and then we're, we are going to store it into separate tanks that will run throughout the um, submarine. These tanks will have switches ba based off of meters and I'll get into the nitty gritty of all that, how, how that works later on. And I can kind of show you guys how to set something like that up. But right now, the first step of that is we need to collect some oxygen. It's not very hard to do. We have plenty of power. We have a nuclear reactor, so we can use hydrolysis, no worries. Um, we just gotta make sure we have fresh water for some reason again in this game. Um, but we're gonna separate that out. We're gonna put a flow valve on the oxygen side so we can send a percentage of that into a separate tank just for oxygen. That way when the carbon dioxide level gets too high in the ship from people breathing we can scrub some of the co2 out pump it out of the ship replace it with fresh air and then also if the o2 levels get too low we can just pump straight o2 in um, there's a couple reasons i'm doing this this is uh, also part of a fire mitigation system essentially what's going to happen is if a fire breaks out in a room it will decrease the o2 level to a uh, portion where the fire is going to have a hard time staying up but um, hopefully the CO2 level won't be too high where you start suffocating. Um, I know it's kind of, it, it sounds really weird as I'm talking about it, but basically when the CO2 gets high, you start to suffocate. When the O2 gets too low, you start to suffocate. Now the fires need basically the same balance to, to burn, you know, you need oxygen in a fire. So those ratios aren't necessarily the same. The convenient thing about that is fire usually needs a little bit more oxygen than a human does. So you can wait for the fire to burn that burn off in the room technically. And then once that happens, we're going to scrub all of the carbon dioxide that came off of the fire out. Um, this is implying that you were able to set the fire out, of course, because, um, you know, obviously it'll kind of run this way, but you still need to <laughs> get the fire to be set out. You are in a boat or a submarine, which is even more dangerous, but essentially it'll, it'll suck all the CO2 out of the room. And then we will be able to replace it with fresh air, which will be stored in a separate tank um, that will be able to be pumped through the conning tower. Once you are at surfaced, um, there will be one other way. We'll get into that. That's kind of a fun um, feature you guys will see. Um, but essentially we'll be able to source fresh air and pure oxygen to basically circulate the air in the submarine make it a lot um, better air which doesn't matter in a video game which is kind of funny um, but you guys know I like to do it a little overdone a little overly realistic probably too complicated um, but that's the fun in it I think this kind of stuff is really really fun especially when you get into um, kind of just using 
you can use kind of the weird aspects of science in this game and, and you know, just weird um, things like that to make the systems a little bit more realistic. And uh, I always find fun in that. So um, we are definitely going to do a O2 system. And that is what this precious little water, water tank is. So um, the structure in this room is kind of all over the place. And uh, you guys kind of saw me fighting around trying to find a place to put the tanks. And uh, that's going to continue for a little bit, but we also need to add quite a little bit of valving in here. So we'll we'll have to get into that. We're going to have to add a flow valve, a one-way flow valve, a check valve, if you will. Um, and then we are going to have to add a variable flow valve and an on-off valve just to close the system off if um, need be. But uh, I think we're just going to stick the tank in down here. And uh, this isn't going to be the only tank, guys. There's going to be a ton of air tanks all over this uh, submarine, obviously. Like I said, um, this isn't going to be the only system either. I, I only kind of explained why we need the flow valves. Um, the flow valves are going to be able to um, regulate the pressure between the oxygen tanks and the ballast blow uh, valves. So basically, if you are really, really low in the water, um, underwater, you can pressurize the ballast tanks, open the valves, um, and as long as you're pressurizing it from the top and then pumping into the bottom, bottom you should be able to force all the water out. Um, you kind of have to do it in one direction. Now, that's a way to do it without power. So the reason I'm doing that is a safety measure. The reason that we need to have the flow valves is because when the oxygen tanks get high enough to basically support the entire ship, we basically can just send the rest of that oxygen into our um, our ballast pressurizing tanks. And basically we're gonna do that with the hydrogen too. So that's what the we're gonna do with the byproduct of this tank. Um, you do have to do something with it. Ideally, you don't pump it straight out into the ocean because then you introduce bubbles into your wake and that makes your sonar, um, basically it makes you a lot easier to get picked up on sonar. Um, so you don't wanna do that. But here is the uh, kind of overcomplicated, convoluted piping section I got going on here. And then this is going to split into a series of other tanks. Now, the nice thing about working with gases instead of liquids is you don't really need to pump them too much if you just pressurize the whole system. Um, and that's what we're going to do here. So we're just going to pressurize the oxygen and then we're going to have a series of basically um, pipes that connect all of the tanks. And then from there, we are going to have different valves that can kind of basically mix the air in certain rooms um, between bulkheads. So um, they will be able to obviously mix when the doors between the bulkheads are open, but the bulkheads are there for a reason. So if you do need to close off the space, they will be independently functioning. Now, I know that was a lot for probably a lot of people, a lot of just kind of jibber jabbering. So I'm hoping I'm not getting too technical here, but in layman's terms, essentially we are producing oxygen and hydrogen gas. We're keeping the oxygen until we don't need it. And we're pushing everything else into a tank that is just being used to, uh, as a safety measure to surface. So that is all that we are doing here. Um, the other way that we're going to co collect fresh air and the fresh air will also mix into those tanks when we have too much fresh air. Um, a lot of pumps, a lot of different fluids going into that tank, um, but they're all relatively inert, which they're, they're all inert in this game. In real life, you probably not want to pump pure H2 into um, your ballast tanks for safety reasons, but we don't have to worry about that. Um, anyways, the fresh air is also going to come from on our conning tower. We are also going to have an inflatable, um, basically, camera setup. So the the conning tower, in, instead of having basically a periscope, we're going to use a periscope um, that floats like a balloon, like a weather balloon, actually. So pretty high up in the sky, you're going to be able to um, look around, laser designate things. But the nice thing about it being that high up is you will be able to be pretty low in the water, um, underwater. And then also you, you will be able to suck fresh air through that balloon, um, through a hose that it's tethered to. And uh, basically that way you can stay underwater and basically never resurface until you run out of food or um, the reactor runs out of fuel. So the limit of this sub is really gonna be more capable of the crew the rest of this really is sorted out by now, which is why I'm doing it in these early episodes, because this is, it, it doesn't seem it because there's not too much piping going on, but this isn't a very simple system. There's a lot of th kind of things that have to mix in different uh, pressures that have to switch valves on and off. But uh, basically this, uh, this orangey tan color is going to be our mixed air valve. And that is just going to be whatever this slop of um, stuff. Hi, cat. Um, whatever the slop of stuff that ends up in our ballast tanks is. So it's just going to be mixed random air pressure. 
what would be kind of really funny, which you can't do in this game, but would be cool, is that means you could run um, your entire workshop off of uh, compressed air equipment instead of electric, um, which you could also do electric, but it's a nuclear reactor, so you kind of have an abundance of both with the system. It would just kind of be cool. Um, it's not really a thing, but air tools are cool. They sound cool. They give you the cool oogie doogas. Um, but that's another thing you could use this for in real life and as well as you know kind of pneumatic servos that kind of thing so it, it's it's kind of old school to have just pressurized air running throughout the uh the the system and uh you know there's obviously there's fail safes that we could go other ways like you know backup batteries and we will do that it's just i'm trying to add as many fail safes as i can i'm this is a zero power kind of situation where you could surface the sub so um that's the goal basically you could uh it's not really realistic but you could hit this submarine with an emp destroy everything and then um you would basically be able to manually open that valve and surface the ship which is pretty cool if you ask me. But uh, enough of the rambling. I've been rambling a lot in this episode, and I know we haven't really been doing too much block placing, so I am sorry. Um, but the uh, the science people probably will appreciate this episode a little bit. So um, you're welcome. But <laughs> there's plenty more to come. We're gonna, like I said, we're gonna try to make this as realistic as power so or is um, possible. And uh, for that reason, we're gonna have a lot of cool shore power features, that kind of stuff too. So uh, you guys will see, we're gonna cram a lot of fun features into this. Um, and I don't really want to spill the beans on that too much, but it is a uh, it is a nuclear powered sub. It is going to be a military one. Um, I am going to make, uh, <clears throat> I'm gonna make some ICBMs probably for it, but uh, I don't know. And uh, we'll also have a fun little um, I guess parasite fighter. Now this isn't going to be a carrier, but I guess in homage to all of the other carriers I've been doing lately, it would only make sense that I have at least one parasite vehicle on this thing. And uh, yeah, but anyways, this is uh, pretty much the end of the episode, guys. I am uh, I'm just gonna sit here and kind of wait for a lot of this to run. I know we're sped up still, but. Um, that is pretty much all I got in this one. In the next episode, we will uh, keep working on this. Th crazy complicated sub and uh, we'll get a little bit better of an image as to what we're really building here. I know you guys haven't seen the outside of it too much, um, but I do think it's going to be a cool, fun build and I do think you guys will enjoy it. I know a lot of people have been asking me to make some submarines. If there's any features you guys want to see in this, I'm not a huge sub guy, so uh, let me know if there's any like must-haves that I got to get into this thing. Um, but yeah, guys, that's, uh, that's pretty much all I got in this episode. Thank you so much for uh, tuning in. I will catch you guys in the next episode. I hope you all all have a wonderful rest of your day.